After publishing your Expo React Native app to the Play Store, you are mostly not done. You might need to add new features or fix problems that may arise, and this is done by releasing updates. I will demonstrate this process using my Expo To Do app on the Play Store. When performing updates, an important step most people forget about is to consider upgrading the Expo SDK version of the app. This is very important and you don't want to skip if you plan on maintaining your application for a long time. The update requires the latest version of Expo CLI, so we run npm install-g Expo CLI to update it. Now the actual SDK is upgraded by running Expo upgrade. The best practice is to upgrade incrementally as updates come with changes such as package removal, renaming and deprecations which can break your app. So we decline the latest update and select the closest one to our current version. This means that if your current version is 40, you need to upgrade to 41 before 42 and so on. After one version update is is complete, you can test run your app to see if anything is broken. To be confident of what has changed, you should search for the SDK version and read about what has changed and see if a package you are using has been renamed or removed so as to make the necessary adjustments. You then have to update the Expo client application on your device by visiting the Google Play or App Store. For the emulator, you can just delete the app and run the project once again to automatically install the appropriate version. Of course, you can ignore this and your already published application will continue to work with no problems. However, if the SDK version of your app is totally deprecated by Expo, you won't be able to use the Expo Go app to run your application and you can't build APKs using Expo Build. Down with the SDK upgrade, we visit package.json and increment our app version numbers. This is assuming that you've made all the changes that you needed to make in your app. Under the Expo key, we can update the version to 1.01. .01. Also under Android, we increment the version by 1. Down with the versioning, we need to generate our app bundle once again. So we run Expo Build Android and pass the app bundle value to the T flap. Sometimes you will be asked to provide a key store value. In that case, you have to provide the key store file that we got when we generated the app bundle for the first time in order for the Play Store to accept our update. If you don't know where the file is, open a new command line tab in your project and run Expo Fetch Android Key Store to fetch the file. If successful, you have to copy the provided path and supply it to the Expo process to start the build. Now with the build process complete, we download the app bundle onto our PC. Having our new app bundle, we log into our Google Play device Developer account by visiting play.google.com forward slash console. Under all apps, we choose the app to update by clicking on the little arrow next to the app name. Now under release, we select production and on the production page, we click on the button to create a new release. On the release page, we drag and drop our app bundle to upload it. While it uploads, we scroll and provide our new release a name and add some release notes. The notes can be a summary of the changes that you've made to the new version of the app. After the upload is complete, we save and then review release. Having no errors, we roll out to production. Warnings are not harmful by the way. Now we see that our release is being reviewed and the process took less than 6 hours to complete. Also on the Play Store, we see that an update is available to be downloaded. Now the final size of your app affects the number of downloads that you get to some extent. The video on your screen now should give you tips to reduce the size. Leave a like on this video and check it out.